stood outside the old three beat as it was. This is the old entrance, three beat. Um, I always wanted to work at three beat because three beat was like the, the shop. It was one of one of the biggest shops in Europe. One of the first people to send records out. And I lived in Skegness. It was it was like there was no record shops there. I used to travel to Nottingham or you know, to Grimsby. I think there was a shop in Grimsby called Industria. Before I knew about 3B, I suppose, more than anything, I, I, I was DJing. Uh, I started DJing at the age of about 14. And I used to play in a kids' room, and I was playing just to just kids, all sorts of whatever it was, just to get out and play records. It wasn't necessarily the records I was into, it was just, just, just playing records was just, you know, great. I just loved holding them for the first record I ever bought. And I started DJing, I actually got my first job DJing in a club from doing the kids' room, which is quite ironic. And then um, I eventually moved to Liverpool, and this is where it all started, really. I mean, I come from a musical background anyway. I mean, my dad was a jazz musician. Um, later moved into entertainment, but my, my dad, you know, was a session musician for the likes of Joe Cocker, and Nancy Wilson. I had the first leg of my journey when I was playing for the Pleasure Dome, and I met all them guys. I, mean, I was DJing, 16 years old. I was DJing some of the greatest DJs in the world. And I was starting, warming up for them the first two or three hours, and then finishing up. You know, my mum used to drop me off. Used to pick me up and drop me off from the club. He's finished at like five, six in the morning, and uh, they just pick me up. So I'm in this hallway here. I used to walk into the shop here now. Spaces, if you like, on the wall. These silver plaques. They're everywhere. All the record labels. It's all the way down. And it was exciting when I first walked down there. And, and, and first went to three. It was amazing. I mean, on Saturday afternoon, it was in the cream heyday. You'd have people like you know Paul Oakenfold, Seth Montaigne. Roger Sanchez, all coming in, all stood at the counter queuing like everyone else. It was, it was, you know, coming from Skegness, exciting, exciting. So then to end up working for one of the, well, in my eyes, the best record shops in the world was really, really exciting. This is the famous 3B door, 3B, sorry, door. I mean, we've had everyone playing here. It's Carl Cox. Uh, it's hard to meet some of the. Uh, it's Danny Crillet, Nick Warren, Der Derek <laughs> insisted on using his thumbprint. He coloured his. That's just Derek, isn't it? He didn't want to use the same colour as anyone else. Crazy P, Yousef, obviously local boy. I, I played with Yousef years ago, actually. He escaped Ness, funnily enough, when Yousef's career just started. We last played together. And then, I mean, you've got, you've got everyone. Forte, great friend of the shop, great friend of vinyl. This is well, these t-shirts were uh, designed by Wasted Heroes, local, local designer. And everyone wears his t-shirts, pictures up there, DJ Pierre, Sasha, Carl Cox. It's a great bit of, bit, of, bit of Liverpool, you know? But I mean, record store day for me came at a really, really like pivotal and important time. When it, was, it was needed, really, I think. And especially, I think, essentially when we moved in here, I mean, I think I was saying earlier, I mean, you can not give a record shop away, no one wants to be in there. The times have been hard, it was lost, and then it, it came back, record store, they brought it back with, with, with that. So this is, this is the new shop. We've started to renovate things, we've got the mezzanine in, we've got a little coffee shop up here, and uh, we've got other plants which I don't want to speak about yet. But this is it, so this became this became our home really, essentially, and um, started going through some changes. Um, that's some great installs in there, some great people and Carl Cox being behind there and playing and just going off in here. Got the lighting everywhere and stuff. I always to turn it into a little bit of a club vibe really. And give people that feeling of sad, this is where it was. This is where I mean, this is how it all started with with record shops and music and as I was saying earlier with the, with the old shop and the, the, that's why you did everything, everyone conversed, everyone got together and it was it was all about that. I mean, I, I was on. I ended up being on radio for eight years. You know, playing music that people didn't really understand. You know, late at night, and by the time I finished, I had thirty thousand listeners. Thirty thousand listeners as a record shop owner, as a DJ, as a producer, to push things forward and to. When you sit in a bubble, you can't do that. This here is where you can. We had some, we had some good times here at Record Store Day. I mean, it started. The queue was. People, then a few more, a few more, a few more, a few more. We were always known as a dance music shop. That was how we, how we were coined as a dance music shop. And essentially, I wanted to not get away from that because that's 
you know, it's part of who I am, you know. I go out and play house music, I do play. But it's also to know where you're going from, you've got to know where you've come from. The Record Store Day gave me that opportunity. It did, it did what it said it needed to do on the tin, you know, because I could then start stocking, stocking on soul, you know, my, my, my roots line, soul, jazz, funk, disco. Record store enabled me to bring people through the door that wouldn't normally come in this shop, ever. And it enabled me to buy records, reissues of records that you, you couldn't get in it. Oh, you know, the, the excitement was back for me again. It gets me excited thinking about it. After the first couple of years of doing it, I just thought, this is brilliant. I thought, this is, this is it. This is gonna, this is gonna do it. This is really exciting. So, started to put a lot into it every year, and I probably spent three or four months of my year, a year working on record store day, and making it good for everybody, and making it exciting, and, and, and try and get as much stock as we could in to, to, to basically be a destination store over the big boys. I um, mean, we were one of the big boys once, but you know, at this at this point we weren't, or at this point we're not. So it it, it was good. But then, you know, times are hard, you know, and then. Like anything, things start to, the walls start to close in and things sort of lose their perspective and they lose what they're all about. So after I was in the shop about, when we were in the old building there, um, for a few years, things things were really, really flying. You know, we had record, we had label management, we had the record shop, we had, uh, we started digital because digital had sort of kicked off. We moved shops, we decided to move and because there had more office space up here and uh, so we moved to this, this this location here and I remember up there we had um, we had label management and we had um, 3 beat digital and then we had the shop here. Uh, we had, I mean over the years we've had everybody, I mean Sasha in the old shop there did his first album launch in there. It's the 3 beat office, could say 3 beat stuff everywhere, but I mean, got I mean, nice and insane, that Forte earlier, that was that was from the in-store for Forte. I mean, my dad was in the music industry, and my dad met a lot of people, you know, things like Barbra Streisand, picture there, dad there, funnily enough, when he played with, just travelled the bank all the Ronnie Dukes and Ricky Lee, and I'm actually there, I've actually still got the trumpet. That's the old one from 2016, I mean, I'm proud of, you know, proud of Record Store Day and what it was achieving, and but, so, it's, uh, record store day this year is 21st of April and um, we you know, was getting ready for it and um, essentially got an email saying we are no longer welcome as part of record store day. So whether it's the feathers I ruffled last year, which probably is, um, I mean their reasoning is apparently I don't like records, I don't like, I don't support records. Every, every day should be, and they don't want disappointed customers. But disappointed customers is what we had last year when none of the boxes turned up. And I had to literally beg to get them returned. Beg, I mean, beg. We're not part of Record Store Day this year. It's a bit strange, but I saw it coming, to be honest with you. I saw it coming. And, but the email is probably like the most disrespectful thing I've ever read in my life, you know. I mean, I, I understand I haven't spent loads of money with the distributors this year. And I've been building my mezzanine. I've been, I've been trying to make the shop better. I've been trying to make the shop better for the customers because isn't that what it's about? Isn't it called Record Store Day, not Distributor Day? You know, isn't the fact that I'm going to come and spend money on Record Store Day? And you know, it, it was it was working for my plan. Record Store Day. I was trying to introduce jazz and soul and funk into the shop and get the albums and then start to engage with them customers. And it was working for me, and I mean that. It was really working, and I've been there since day one. And now I'm not welcome. We're not welcome. We're not welcome. It's it's kind of heartbreaking, really. It's it's heartbreaking that I would have to read an email that basically tells me that I don't support it. I supported distributors all my life. So I mean, it's just not good. It's it's, it's a shame to be honest with you. And no one supported record store day more than me. I mean, I remember I, I gave an interview at the Soul Weekend. I was DJing at the Soul Weekend, and that's that's Vinyl, Vinyl Head Paradise. And I and I gave an interview last year 
with somebody from there. In fact, someone who was interviewing me and then the, the sound guy who was filming it said, pulled me to one side and went, I heard you mention record store day. Can I talk to you about it? And I went, yeah. And the dude pulled me and went, look, I've got some friends that think this and think that and put it down, really. Well, his friends would put it down and I was giving him the truth about it. But I think essentially people don't want to hear the truth about things, do they? You know. But I could have, you know, I can work through problems and that, but I, one thing I won't have is people telling me that I don't support records or music or whatever it might be. I'm uh, Kieran Hebden, Fortet, here in Liverpool, doing uh, in store at 3B Records, and uh, I'm going to play Club Calls Shipping Forecast tonight for Abandoned Silence. Yeah, it's just wicked, like people can come by after work or college or whatever and just check out a bit of music and I think it inspires people to remember about buying records direct in a record shop, you know, just becoming like a rarer sort of thing. And I grew up coming to record shops exactly like this one and you know, going after school or whatever and listening to like new records that were coming out and that's how I was kind of learning about music and how I, I got my first record deal in a record shop like this I got everything started for me in record shops and uh, so really believe in them people often say to me like, oh you know I want to start doing music once I do and I'm always like go hang out in a record shop you know that's where that's where people who care about music probably are going to be you know give them, don't just randomly send a CD to like a uh, record label or something go play it to people in a shop or something <laughs> they'll actually give it a listen and, uh, and you'll meet people in the shop that are in the same situation so yeah, something like this is this is a really really good thing. You know? Seeing a record shop packed out at like seven o'clock at night, and people buying a lot of records as well. It's all cool. So last year, um, I think was the, the the first telltale signs for me that things weren't well. People might have thought it was, but for me, I felt it, it wasn't. It's was getting a little bit difficult. It's getting you know the the, the 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 rules and regulations to it were getting a bit unrealistic. And I care about the shop, care about the customers. I mean, I proper, I, I really do. I really, I want to, I want to do good for them, and I want to. So I take it seriously. I throw myself into this record store. Then it wasn't all about one day. It never has been about one day for me. <laughs> I've spent all my life in record shops. Just leave school and go. So it ain't one day. But if that one day is the is is, is the platform. You know, the excitement of a young kid coming in. You know, his first record, I mean, so it, it's important. It's an important thing, it's, it's important. Then, the year before last, it was becoming like, difficult to actually buy the records that I wanted to sell. Essentially, it's to put booms on seats if it works, to basically make awareness of vinyl, basically to get people to buy records, to visit the record shop and want to do that day in, day out. And to bring back that buzz of record shops. Let's nurture it, let's make sure it, it, it does what it's supposed to do. It's not, it's not then change what it's all about and change the actual rules to suit a select few. It's not about that. I uh, started to have problems and essentially I spent a lot of money with some of the majors and uh, and, uh, and I, f I felt that more from Warner Brothers. I spent a battle even trying, I mean Warner Brothers wouldn't even deal with me, you know. And I, you know, I, like I said before, I, I worked with EMI, I worked with everyone. I remember in the old in the old 3B, getting a box like that, of records. And it might be like, I remember Rootbox for instance by Robbie Williams, bang, stamp, Rootbox, Rootbox, Rootbox. No one knew what it was, but it was all house mixes and that. Now, for the major labels to sell that to people, they needed us, because we were the top of the tree in dance music census. So what they want to do is, they want to change the profile of an artist. Who do they need? Us. Because that's how important we were. We were what they called taste makers. And so, if anything, I think I've supported the majors over the years a lot. I'm passionate about what I do. You don't want me on your case because I'm not going to just go, hang on a minute. Yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I won't do that. Why would I? I've been in this business all my life. So last year, those boxes that didn't turn up from, from two major labels killed it. 
I mean, we had customers upset, angry, the whole thing, and I remember being stood on here, passing down records, and seeing this guy, this little kid here, trying to buy a Beatles record, and I'll never forget it. Some guy snatching it out of his hand. Snatching it out of his hand because there wasn't enough copies of it to go round. Standing in a queue for two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, in pissing rain. To not even get what you want. So, the, the fight went on last year between me and the majors and between Record Store Day themselves. Um, so, it was concerning me to be honest with you. 